When the Spanish were colonizing the Aztec capital at what is now Mexico City, historians tried to compare the native society and culture to instances from the old world, familiar colors through foreign palettes, alien images filtered through stained glass. The Aztec canals recalled Venetian waterways, the major gods resembled Greek mythology, and the mythical calendar echoed European astrology. The Spanish deemed the Mexican horoscope of lesser scientific quality than the European counterparts because, they argued, at least the latter came from regular observations of the planets. That is to say, the Spanish believed that their own astrology was more convincing because it was at least based on natural movements. This was supposedly unlike the Aztec zodiac, whose reliance on sets of numbers made the whole system look artificial and so unreliable. Nowadays, anthropologists know that colonial bias couldn't be further from the truth, and I will use these approaches in today's episode on the beginnings of the mythical calendar in Mesoamerica. This calendar did indeed follow natural patterns gleaned by ancient sky watchers, just with extra steps, even literally. Cosmic bodies were gods crossing the sky by their own footpaths. Especially important to the origins of the calendar were the Sun, Mars, and Venus. In this panel from the Codex Borgia, the Venus god appears as a fierce and terrible warrior, taking five forms and striking different targets with his spear, depending which sequence of days mark his position. A planet's synodic period is the cycle of its path as observed from Earth. It will differ from the planet's actual year because it also includes Earth's revolutions, but synodic periods are regular enough to chart. Mesoamerican astronomers believe that this regularity was another of the many designs by which to measure the presence of sacred forces in the world. Ancient priests combined them to produce the calendar. The Venusian synodic period is 584 days. Multiplying this number by 65 yields 37,960 days. Using a math term, this is a lowest common multiple with days counted from the solar year, the Martian period, and the 260-day mythical calendar itself. 37,960 was 104 solar years, assuming 365 days each. For just an aside, the Aztec and Maya did understand leap year, and they tried different ways to clean up the mess that it made. 104 is also twice 52 years, an important cycle for the Aztecs that I will explain in the video on the calendar's ritual uses. This multiple is also the product of 146 times 260, the length of the mythical calendar round. And lastly, the Martian period has 780 days, itself a multiple of 260. If you watched the last video, you may remember the importance of the 20-day month, which many cultures combined with sets of 13 to produce the 260-day count. It was possible, for example, to name a day by a number from 1 to 13 and one of the 20 signs. I will unpack the meaning of this ritual cycle in the next video, which will look at how the Maya picked up the calendars. We are looking now at where and when they first appeared in Mesoamerica. To talk about the origins of the Mesoamerican culture area, we almost always consider the Olmec, who flourished between 1200 and 400 BC. The Olmec were not the only civilization of this period, but they became the most influential in the development of culture and society. I have highlighted the region in yellow, humid wetlands along the south coast of the Gulf of Mexico. The purple dot marks Tres Zapotes, an Olmec site that lasted for centuries after its contemporaries. From this site hails a stone monument broken into two parts. Read together, the five bar and dot numbers of this long count date represent a day from the year 31 BC. A similar sequence was recently found at Chiapa de Corso in the Mexican state of Chiapas. Just a few years earlier with a date of 36 BC, it is the earliest known long count date, if not the oldest recorded date in the New World. On the last embers of the Olmec civilization sparked new cultures looking to keep the old flames alive. From west of the Olmec Crescent rose a distinct society called the Epi Olmec, literally after the Olmec, to follow them in both time and culture. The red dot at west marks La Mojarra, the site of a monument illustrating efforts to continue Olmec ideas and techniques. The La Mojarra Stele displays a royal profile at left, and I write an impressive text written in glyphs. We will zoom into a part of the inscription featuring two dating systems, one above the other. 
a month sign, and then a long count date. They appear in the highlighted column. These texts were written in combined sequences of top to bottom and left to right, and so that is how we will read these figures. First is a knotted serpent perched atop a layered platform. This is a glyph marking the 20-day month in which the long count date fell. Below begins the long count with three dots over a five bar to count eight for the longest unit of time. Next is a single bar for five. The third position has three bars and a dot. Three times five plus one dot makes 16. The fourth number has a bar and four dots. Five plus four makes nine. And the fifth and final number has one bar and two dots for seven. The full sequence may be read as eight, five, sixteen, nine, seven. The next video will explain how this works. An older reading of this date pointed to a day in the year 169 AD, but recent studies suggest earlier, by the year 156. While controversy continues over how to read these glyphs, one study of the text presents a couple important ideas. One, the king exercised spiritual power during a solar eclipse. Two, the power invoked the king's Nawal, a companion spirit usually in the guise of a wild animal. This is a seminal concept in Native American shamanism, the subject for another video. Calendars therefore emerged in southern Mexico as a way to record the feats of kings and queens, often with reference to cosmic events. The dancing of gods in the sky revealed mythical episodes, which in turn added weight to political matters. Scribes poured together the royal, the celestial, and the mythical in their stories, and the calendar funneled the flow. Join me for the next episode as I show how the Maya would pick up these calendar traditions and make them blossom. I will explain how the Maya developed the 260-day and long-count systems, best known for the turning of a major cycle in 2012.